uh, discontinuity between our governing documents and what we've been practicing this summer. And so um, we have a little something we've written today in, in line with the work being done in the governing documents committee to address that conversation and to address some of those concerns. Um, as uh, I hope to fulfill the um, the promise to, to work to have a functioning governing doc, uh, a functioning student government here, um, and that's part of um, part of my attempt to do that. And so I just wanted to again thank everyone for being there at that last meeting, um, and I appreciate the votes of confidence to be the new co-chair. I'm happy to be here, and Dan and I are going to work out how exactly this dynamic is going to function moving forwards. Um, but yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paul. Moving on to the approval of the agenda. So everybody should have got an email. Should got an email with the approval or I mean, excuse me, with the agenda. So is anybody opposed to moving forward with the agenda? Paul, I am. I personally think we should amend the agenda um, so that point four under new business or sorry, point A under four new business where it says fall meeting time discussion, we should amend that to instead say discussion of CR 22-9, a resolution to amend our governing documents to address the very same question. Essentially, this would be a twofer. And so to explain why I propose this amendment to our agenda is that we'd, we'd be both capable of having that discussion and solidifying um, a concrete meeting time. This co-chair accepts, is anybody Anybody opposed to amending the agenda? Hearing none. OK. The agenda is amended. Now on to committee reports, governing documents committee. Paul. Thank you, Dan. The governing documents committee respects the reports that we've met for the third time um, on Thursdays at three. And that's an ongoing uh, time commitment that we have at present. Uh, we can move going forwards if that time doesn't work out for people. But as uh, as of yet, what we've continued to do is um, look at points of the document that aren't being followed, um, where we suggest a lot of us are suggesting we strike those portions of the document, um, whereas there are sections where um, we need to revise, like in regards to our you know, stipend. The, it, it says we're being paid by monthly. We're not. It says we're being paid a lot more than we are. Um, so we're currently still working to um, make the document accurately reflect the um, what what the council is doing right now. Um, so yeah, we'll be meeting next Thursday at three o'clock. Uh, everyone in the governing documents committee is welcome, and per our bylaws, if you're not in the governing documents committee, you're welcome to join it and to join us in our deliberation. Um, and I invite anyone who's not willing to join the committee to view our governing documents, the member handbook or the communal document where we have a copy for comment. And so we still welcome your input. Um, there's a lot to go through. They're very dense documents. And so part of what we're doing is structuring them into articles, finding out what um, what we're keeping, what we're cutting, what we're revising. Um, and that's the the gist of what we've done so far. A lot is underway. We aim our goal in the governing documents committee, as we've been talking, is to aim for a completed first draft or a completed draft of our governing documents to propose in the weeks to come here um, so that we might adopt it at the beginning of this semester. Thank you. Thank you. Say cab, Stephanie, then Mike, if there's anything to add. Hi, y'all. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Um, no, I don't have anything. Um, I think what had just gone out was the whole um, Siggy's Hub thing, and we're still, I haven't heard anything back from regarding that. So I have no update. Thank you, Stephanie. Mike, would you like to add something? Yes, so um, I just <clears throat> had a chat with Nicole, uh, the SACAB secretary um, this morning. Um, the first official SACAB meeting is the 2nd of September, and uh, I believe he uh, got a flyer out the 18th of August. We are going to be doing like a social 
So invite everyone from SACAB or everyone from SACAB and some extra people to kind of get to know each other and see what our priorities are for the upcoming year. So those are the two updates I have currently. Thank you, SACAB. Board of Trustees, Gabe, floor is yours. Hi, y'all. Um, I, have a, I do not have anything for a BOT um, as of yet. Um, our first meeting will be like that. I'll be part of it will be the 25th, the, yeah, the 25th um, and 26th or 24th and 25th, that Thursday and Friday um, of the first week of classes. Um, so yeah, so once I have any more information, I'll just let y'all know. Thank you so much. Social media committee, Chad, or yours. Can everybody hear me? Hello? We can hear you. Okay, excellent. Um, so social media committee met on Wednesday. I believe we ha now have access to all of our social medias. And um, we put out some information about the school supply drive when it is, uh, who's available to, uh, to take school supplies and such. And we're also talking about um, future posts and what uh, minimum requirements of every post should look like. And we're gonna continue structuring that a little more uh, in the future. Thank you. CSGC representative updates. So an update on that is next Friday after the weekly meeting at 5 p.m. The representatives has a, excuse me, yeah, we have a um, meeting with the chair of the CSGC, Abby McAdams. And so after that meeting, we will update the council with what we spoke of. Thank you on that. Policy advisory committee. Taylor, Ree. Uh, we, we met online yesterday and uh, the committee is still working on the policy for inclement weather and emergencies and how to handle that. But overall, the feeling is that regardless of mode of instruction, whether it's going to be asynchronous, synchronous, or in person, when there is an emergency and um, AHEC will close the campus, there will be no classes held. And it's looking like that's going to be the recommendation to the president, but it won't be finalized um, for a couple more weeks still. Thank you. Budget committee and MSU Denver BRC committee. Mike, you have anything? Uh, the budget, I have nothing to report for um, either of those committees. We were supposed to have a BRC meeting this morning, but that got canceled. So um, I have nothing to report. I have a question for you, Mike, if it's possible. Sure, go ahead. Um, could you, is it possible that we could get a breakdown of the gym fees or the athletic fees that all, I think all MSU students pay athletic fees? And the reason I'm asking is um, I think going forward, we were talking about the CU membership and the CU pool. And I know I'm about to buy one. It costs 70 bucks a month. Um, I know it might be a tall order to ask if. Uh, hey, if point of order, Alan. Uh -huh. um, just can we save that for. Um, outside of just committee round tables. And so, well, we're giving committee reports, we keep it to that and maybe we can discuss that when it comes to new business. Okay, sure. I appreciate you. Yeah, not to not to interrupt, but thank you very much. And I, I think it's important information for us to get. So thanks for asking. Fac Faculty Student Affairs Committee, Naomi. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, we haven't gotten anything yet. Um, I think they're not gonna start up with anything until um, school starts on August 22nd, um, so sometime around there we'll probably get more of an update. So same old, same old. COVID response committee. <clears throat> Paul. So um, we haven't met again since our last meeting, but we'll be meeting on the 6th of September. Um, so far, I'll just reiterate what the uh, gist of the last update was, and that is that the health center is no longer doing contact tracing. And so individuals who are sick or suspected that they um, came into contact with other um, COVID positive people uh, do not have to report it to the health center. 
though there is supposedly an online portal that can still be used, it's not something that's being actively traced by them. Thank you. Thank you. Student Travel Committee, Bree. There was one presentation to review this week and they received full funding um, going to a conference um, in Colorado for health and they plan to share that information with campus as guest speakers and for class uh, benefit for their major. Thank you. Armando, advisor updates. Hello, hello. Y'all can hear me? Right. Yeah, we can hear um, you. Awesome, awesome. I have a couple things. Um, things for the school supply drive were purchased, except the calculator and the memory drives uh, on Amazon. You're only allowed to buy four uh, TI-30s. Don't know why, but um, so I'm going to see if I can go to Walmart and pick some up. I went last night to one Walmart. I didn't see any, um, so I will see. Um, the book bags will not be arriving until after the 16th, so I don't know. I haven't seen too much publication from y'all in terms of Instagram. I don't know where exactly the social media outreach has been for the um, school supply drive, but I would say make it more of a passing thing if you are, if you haven't reserved tables or anything, like more, make it more of a passing thing to get people to come into the office and say like, hey, stop by, pick up supplies. I mean, you could definitely set up a table, open the doors and like welcome people. That'll be awesome. But I don't know what the event was for the 16th, but just know that the book bags will not be there. Um, they are coming two days later just because of they're not from Amazon. They're from a third party, whatever. Um, that's that. <clears throat> in terms of the executive assistant summary, I had sent the co-chairs. I believe I sent that to everybody, actually. Um, the applications, one of the applications, uh, one of the applicants said that they already got a student job. So we're down to two people where one person has scheduled an interview. The other person still has not. So I will go ahead. Um, the interviews will just be with the co-chairs myself, just so we're not bombarding them with a full-fledged panel interview for literally a student job. It's not that big of a deal. Um, so those will be next week. Hopefully we can keep it pushing. If that's the only person that goes through, that's the only person that goes through. Um, next, let me just make sure I go through my notes real fast. Uh, 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 uh. Your stipends were submitted, so hopefully everyone should be getting paid at the end of the month who are paid counselors. Um, Thank you for getting that information back. I just want to make sure um, everyone who has not had a student employee role before, just make sure your direct deposit information is set up. If you have not filled out a W-4 or direct deposit information, um, I will drop those forms into the uh, the Google, not the Google, the Microsoft Teams chat, and then I will teach you how to do the secure uh, secure drop off or drop box submissions, whatever that is. Um, if you have any questions, if you need to do that, I would contact accounts payable and make sure that they can help you out with that personally. Um, and then last thing I just want to say um, in regards to last week and the whole meeting on and off thing, um, Dr. Brown and I have talked and we recognize that, yes, we are still your uh, we are advisors, but we are still the staff responsible for you all. And I think one thing that I just want to make sure is that everyone just make sure that there's situa situational awareness for your other peers and for the students that you are serving. And that saying, we canceled the meeting because Dr. Barone was literally running around the campus trying to make sure things were in order and you all proceeded to have the meeting, which was OK. We were able to hop on. But as you saw for her, she had to hop off because she literally had to go into a meeting with the president to address what was going on on the campus. This wasn't a direct. Attack or claim to our campus, but since we share our campus with CCD, we were being proactive. Moving forward, just be mindful. You don't know what everyone's situation is. You don't know if someone was involved in that situation. So if we cancel the meeting, literally student government will not burn down as it did last year. <laughs> like student government will not burn down. Business will continue. We will be okay. Just make sure we are here to support one another and to serve the students. 
Um, that's really all I had to say about that. I just want to make sure people were, people were being mindful of others just because business needs to move forward. I see two hands, Naomi, and then Gabe. So yeah. the chair will recognize hands, um, but we'll go ahead and if they're relevant questions to the advisor roundtable, go ahead, Naomi. Yeah, um, first and foremost, this has been happening a lot, so I'm just kind of being uh, proactive. It's actually Naomi. Um, a lot of people say Naomi, it's Naomi, but it's Naomi, so appreciate that. Um, Thank you. And second, um, yeah, so with the stipends uh, thing, is I just want to make sure and clarify this. Uh, so if we've already been uh, uh, like employed, so like I'm a tour guide, so since my information is already in the system, I, I didn't need to like redo that or anything, right? Unless something changed, you should be perfectly fine. Okay, sweet. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's all. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Uh, go ahead, Gabe. Awesome. Hi, Armando. Um, so I just have a quick question for you. Um, so I know last year, um, like, well, before last year, like the student government uh, signed up as a student organization as well on campus. Um, last year, the student, the, the TSAC did not because we did not meet any other qualifications for it because we had no governing documents. Um, however, this year, and I know we have governing documents and I, and I saw the email that was sent out this morning about student organization um organization student organization registration being open and stuff soon um and i'm just wondering should we register as a student organization or should we stay like we did last year no i would definitely register as a student organization uh that opens up on the 15th i would definitely register you guys have uh already us uh even if it's small you have a sample body of governing documents so that that works um and i'm Definitely sure Roy will make accommodations because he understands what's going on with student government, so it should be fine. Awesome, thank you. Awesome, and I just had one uh, or two more updates that I just wanted to say. I forgot to mention, I'm sorry. Um, you all signed up for convocation. Apparently we signed up three times, so we're good to go on that front. Um, I did want to ask though, on third, convocation is Thursday, I believe it's Thursday, Thursday the 18th. Um, I do request, because I know we are part of CMEI, if anyone has any free time, uh, CMEI staff and student workers will be setting up all day that day. We have about 500 chairs and like 50 something tables to set up. If you all are free before or after your budget committee meetings, please, please, please help out because uh, we'll be running around from the quad and inside and outside. Um, I know the team will definitely appreciate it and yeah, it'll it'll just be greatly appreciated if you all can help. We'll be there from literally like 8 a.m. to like 11 p.m. Just making sure convocation is done well. So um, I appreciate it all. If you can, please do show up. If not, we will see you there for the tables. Thank you. Yeah. All right, on to section three, old business. So section A, school supply drive update. But really quick, Naomi, is that an old hand you've got? Oh, yeah, my bad. Thanks, guys. Sorry okay. about that. No problem. Just wanted to make sure um, you, you were waiting on us to give you some time. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to pursue the old business onto the school supplies drive updates. Uh, so far, we have some good stuff. Um, it sounds like Armando's ordered uh, the supplies we need, which is uh, some, some minor hiccups as a result of uh, some sort of uh, order limit on the calculators. We'll work past that and get those. Um, I will be, I'll, I'll work to acquire the flash drives from Micro Center, it's probably the best price we can get, honestly, and you have to buy them in store. So I'm willing to go in and bring some uh, receipts so that we can, uh, so that I can be reimbursed. Um, but other than that, we've had um, a little over $200 in school supplies donated from the English department and the engineering department. Uh, they're on the round table in our office right now, but we got a lot of good stuff. We have G2 pens. We have a ton of nice pencils, uh, notebooks, some binders, um, graphing paper, uh, a lot of good stuff, no, uh, notepads and, and the like. And we're continuing to solicit these donations. Um, if anyone knows any organizations or departments or anything that would be able to give us some extra supplies, please reach out to them. We'll be having the school supplies drive on the 16th of this month in the Tivoli quad, specifically like the commons. So outside of um, the Tivoli and the physical education building outdoors at present, that's what, that's our plan. We will, of course, uh, per our resolution, continue to have these supplies available through our office. Um, and so that'll be good for the backpacks and stuff. Um, but other than that, um, 
really don't have much in the way of school supplies drive updates. We did make it more general so that we would be able to have this event, even if our uh, ins like our institutional colleagues at CCD and UCD couldn't join us, though the invitation has been sent. Um, they're welcome to join us. We're going to be having this either way. So um, that's everything I have. Uh, did anyone have any questions or concerns about the school supplies drive? Yeah, just two comments I dropped in the chat. I was able to get the other calculators. Um, not just not the TI-30, so the, the larger graphing calculators, I was able to get those. Um, and then just connect with me and send me whatever store information so I can purchase the flash drives that you were intending to purchase. Um, Dr. Brown said we will not be doing reimbursements this year, so and that's just a note for everybody. Don't try to purchase anything on your own dollar and try to get a reimbursement. Let it go through me because we still have to do tax exempt and all this other stuff. All right, so um, to that point, They'll need to be purchased in person at Micro Center in the DTC. So, um, and those were the options we went with because they were the most economical. It's just not, not we can't order them from their website. Is DTC um, a store on campus? I don't know. What DTC no, is. Sorry. it's it's um, it's in the Denver Tech Center um, off of, I'd say like, two twenty five and what? Okay, LD, maybe? just just shoot me but, all that information and then I can walk over there on Monday and purchase it. OK, I'll say that information, but it's definitely a drive from campus, not a long one, but oh, that's, like a, jo that's a jaunt over here. Um, it's closer to like Highlands Ranch. Oh, Re, I see you got your hand up. I just wanted to make a suggestion that um, if you start blasting this, you know, the drive, obviously from today, um, it might be nice if we could put our logo on some little cards, just print them out on, on stock paper as kind of like a rain check for the book bags. So they could know to come by next week to pick up a book bag. And then, you know, there's a little awareness of our of our logo or, you know, I don't know, just an idea. I really like that idea, Ree. And I was kind of thinking something similar just so we could, you know, um, get the bags accounted for. We could print yeah. like I think we ordered like somewhere between like 50 to I can't remember how many bags, but it was, I think it was less than 100. But we could print a certain amount of tickets and kind of, you know, give them to folks who need the bags and then they can come to the office and get one once we have right. it. Gabe, I noticed you have your hand up. Go ahead. Um, awesome. Thank you. Um, so just my question is, so how will it be advertised? Like, is it going to be like a flyer on social media? Um, is it going to be sent out, you know, through email or something? I just want to know um, how this will be advertised um, to the community. Thank you for the question, Gabe. It's a good one. It hasn't been specifically ironed out, though, in our social media committee, we've talked about and created a few posts, um, like draft posts to post on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, and the like, and on our Roadrunner link as well. And so uh, really, our plan is to advertise on social media. And I personally believe that we should um, find the advertisement that's most fit for print, print, maybe um, 100 to 200 of them and put them around the campus um, is our uh, other means of advertising. I see, Dan, you got your hand up, go ahead. So I believe there's also a few different, um, like we might be able to advertise in the uh, the runner, the early bird newsletters that go out you know, weekly to the various uh, departments at the school. Um, and then CMEI has a blog, uh, like a, events for student orgs called the Blorg. And um, so I think there's a, several other ways that we can uh, do that as well. I'll get with the social media committee on that. And I have a list of other ways to reach out to students about events and such things on this campus. So I'll do that. Thank you, Dan. That's an excellent addition to our advertisement for this event. And excellent questions, everyone. I think we've ironed out some, uh, or ironing out some kinks, um, which will be helpful as we approach the event here. Um, Please do when you see, see our social media pages post this, please see if you could amplify it, retweet it, you know, like it, all that. Um, share it if you can. Um, it'd be good. And and just in general, tell your classmates about this opportunity. Um, and just so we can get more people to, to take advantage of it, really. Um, uh, take advantage of this opportunity we're offering. So unless there's any other questions or any, any other ideas, um, you know, We'll call this section. Anything? All right. I have something. Oh, go ahead, Gabe. Oh, sorry, not Gabe. Taylor, my bad. Um, I was just wondering, is there a TSAC events committee at this point? 
No. Okay. Just in the past, like that committee would do the events and like focus on the ads and stuff. Just an idea. I don't think we at present have such a committee. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for that uh, update on the school supplies drive. Number B, or letter B, this is the um, SGT SAC sec uh, secretary position. This is just the final discussion. So their interviews next week, as Mar Armando said, there was two people that the several people applied three. I think one of them took the position elsewhere and only one is um, slated to have an interview next week. So I believe Armando put the resumes of the candidates in the chat. Hopefully all the counselors has had has had it, the opportunity to overlook the resumes. And I guess if there's any final concerns, questions, anything about that, now's the time. Otherwise, um, we will be interviewing the candidates next week and hopefully have an executive secretary or executive assistant. I think that probably is better um, starting the following week. So open up the floor to any anybody who's opposed or anything that they saw on that. Otherwise, we'll just move forward with this and um, move on to the next item on the agenda. Is every Hearing none. OK. All right, so. Number C convocation tabling this on the um, 18th. So I think there's been a few of us that are willing to table for that um, check ins at 430, obviously. Or I mean, apparently we've registered three times, so I know I did twice. I, I would just to be sure I wasn't sure if I did it the first time, but now that I realize that, yeah, I did it twice and Armando did it once. Appreciate that Armando. Um, Basically, we need to know what, what are we going to have on our table? Are we just going to have a table with us standing there? Or is, so this would be the time for some discussion on that. Um, any ideas we want to throw around? Do we just want to have us standing there, uh, some trivia, something like this to engage students? I'm not, I guess, really uncertain um, all about that. And then also, who's going to be there? So let's open up that floor. Uh, uh, Taylor. Um, I can tell you how TSEC tabled in the past and say cap, I guess. We just like give out swag. Um, Stephanie knows a little bit more about the TSAC tabling since I was doing SACAB. Do you, you want to share? Thank you. Yeah, so um, you kind of just stand there um, with what you got. You give it and you give a little spiel, a little thumb thumb. Yeah, it's not really too difficult. You kind of just stand there, you disseminate information, talk about what you're doing, why it's important. Um, I'm not sure how much swag we currently have in the office uh, readily available in, this, in such a short amount of time. Um, but whatever we do have, we can use, we can give it, even if it's just random stickers or like a random cup you see that has TSEC on it or student government, just give it, have it there. Um, I know last, what was it, last semester, it wasn't necessary. well, it was kind of TSAC tabling. We had um, the snow cone machine, which I feel got us a lot more traction, um, and that was thanks to CMEI. So if we can be by CMEI, that would be great because everyone goes to their tables because they always have good stuff. Thank you. Alan? Stephanie answered my question about, I was wondering what swag we had, but I'll volunteer to stand there and talk. Um, no problem. And I think it's a good idea to be around the snow coat machine. I think it's one of the most popular hits out there on the field. <laughs> great. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Gabe? Awesome. Yeah, I just want to emphasize again on that point of like having something to give out. Um, I know last year TSEC did not do convocation, but we did do meet the SGA day, um, which I'm also wondering if that's still going to happen this year or not. But that's a whole other thing for another time. Um, but we gave out Otter Pops that time and like people really like Otter Pops a lot. So just like giving some sort of like food or snack or something could really enhance the traction that we get at our table. That that's a good idea, Gabe. Otter pops, you said otter pops. They're like the ones in the little little long cylindrical popsicles. Great idea. Any further discussion? Any other ideas? Three. I wanted to ask if Armando could pick us up a supply of otter pops because he's the only one that can buy that. And I can bring a cooler. I have a. They need to be frozen first, but we could probably freeze them. Oh, they need to be frozen first, but we could freeze them in CMEI's freezer. 
potentially. If if they'll let us. Hours. Okay. We need yeah, to ask yeah, Armando, don't we? Are <laughs> other pops just like the freezer pops you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think yeah. they have like the little ones in the plastic, little things you rip off and suck. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Like 100? How many? Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Probably that's a lot. Yeah, I'll just good. get a good amount. That's fine. All right, cool. Thanks. I'll bring my cooler. Awesome. Stephanie, did you have your? Yes. Sorry. Um, can we get a spreadsheet going of who is going to be there from what time? And if someone can do that, that would be wonderful. So then we all know who's going to be. If we're going to be covered the entire time, that would be awesome. And just for accountability. Thank you, uh, Mike. Hey, Stephanie. Yeah, I can make that tonight. I, I can send that and make that in chat, like a little spreadsheet that has who signed up for what. And we can do different hour increments. Um, yeah, I can make that today. Thank you. Thanks, Mike, for doing that. Five to seven, four thirty is set up. OK, unless we come earlier to help. Yes, and CMEI needs help setting up so earlier if possible. OK. says would def bring some school supplies to give out there thank you armando All right new new business fall meeting time so i have on the agenda oh yeah amended the agenda so fall meeting time uh, want to read well, yeah, so we earlier in the meeting, we had amended this portion of the agenda to um, introduce and said the CR 220 CR 22-9, a resolution to amend our governing documents. Um, it's very short, so I'm just going to go ahead and read what the proposed change is. Uh, it says we, the members of the Metropolitan State University of Denver Student Government the Student Advocacy Council, will amend our governing documents to outline the following changes. Meetings will occur once a week at the time and date specified in the agenda set out by the sent out by the chairs or secretary. Counselors are expected to do their civic duty on committee assignments and to show up to meetings during the time and date specified on the agenda. Counselors must inform the council of anticipated absence at least one week in advance in person or by email if possible. Four, if the campus is closed for emergency, our meeting will be canceled. Five. If any member of the council is unsure of whether we should be meeting, they may introduce a poll in the SGT SAC Microsoft Teams to determine whether we may reschedule or cancel the coming meeting on the basis of a single of a simple majority. I'll reread that because it got a little jumbled. If any member of the council is unsure of whether we should be meeting, they may introduce a poll in the SGT SAC Microsoft Teams to determine whether we reschedule or cancel the coming meeting on the basis of a simple majority. Portions of our governing documents that are in conflict will be struck or otherwise revised to align with the changes outlined in this resolution. This task will be assigned to the governing documents committee and that's it. So I open the floor to discussion on this resolution. Dissent first. I saw uh, Gabe's, Gabe's hand. Awesome, hi, awesome. So um, I just gotta say that personally, um, I think instead of, of of having it vague, of having it like, you know, um, whichever time is set on the agenda, we should instead set a specific day and time to ensure that we have the most people who can be there at that time um, instead of, of, of a, you know, a, what if, if for whatever reason it changes, you know, like one week, 2 p.m., one week, 3 p.m. and stuff that could cause less people to show up because of previous engagements. I think we have a set time that would make it easier on everyone to know when the meeting is and to make sure that we have the most people present in our meeting. To speak to that specifically, um, we had thought about that concern and um, I had spoke with Dan and he was willing to uh, join me in committing to having meetings uh, while we chair on Fridays from 2.30 to 4.30 and that that would be reflected in our agendas. Um, I personally, um, I'm not sure if you're suggesting we amend this document, um, yes. but I, would, um, I wouldn't necessarily consider that a friendly amendment. And so I would propose that um, if we were to take a look at that, we should vote on that as a separate and different resolution, in my opinion. I noticed that we had uh, Taylor, and then I saw Ree's hand. So go ahead, Taylor. Stephanie, oh, go Stephanie, I'm sorry. 
Well, you mentioned, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I would like to join Gabe in his sentiment. I think I, I would rather be specific now um, and just get that out of the way. I'd like to set a specific time that we meet so then we can all just have that in our calendars book for the rest of the academic year. And we can look forward to it every Friday or Thursday or Monday or Tuesday. I don't know. Um, I would greatly appreciate that just because I know my schedule is really busy. I can't, I would, I would like to know now at the beginning of the semester. Um, I also want to take up with, I think, what was it? Number four, if the campus is closed for emergency, our meeting will be canceled. Um, I don't know. How do we feel about that? I, I don't know if, what, what emergency, like. I would like to be specific with what emergency, like, I don't know, like if we get like a we can answer email that question. warning about someone like at the at the what is it? Not the train station. I keep thinking about the train station. You've asked okay. a question. I want to answer it if you can. If we have no, I, I'd like to continue, please. Um, but at the I, I can't think of the name right where the buses are at. Like if we get an email sent out, is that an emergency? Yep, the bus stop. The bus stop. Sorry. Um, can we be more specific with what emergencies, please? I'd just like to be specific in this. Thank you. Would you like that question answered or is it rhetorical? Both of them, please. Thank you. OK, so I take it you want them answered. And I will say that um, the kind of emergency, the whole reason that I wrote number four in was because of the concerns that were voiced. I can't remember who specifically, but I do remember uh, you, Stephanie and Gabe, both talking about the, the problem of the fact that the university had found it fit to close the campus that we would still have a meeting. And after talking to Re about this and about the policy that they have in place at the University of Colorado Boulder, um, I, I, I found it um, fitting that in the event of an emergency that closes our campus that we too will cancel our meetings. Um, I just did some reconsidering on it and I think it makes sense personally. What kind of emergency? The kind of emergency that would close the campus. That's my answer to that question. And I see Dan, you got your hand? Re first, re first, and then yes, I, I recognize myself. Just quickly, uh, Stephanie, you might have missed this with the policy committee. Um, they are looking toward, they're pretty near consensus, but we have another meeting to go, that they are aligned with what University of Colorado and Boulder is doing in that when Auraria deems the, the whole campus should be closed, and I think this was an issue with what um, Armando was telling us early as, earlier as well with Dr. Braun and how we held the meeting anyway. Um, all things will be closed, whether that's meetings among staff, um, even um, classes that are asynchronous, they're going to say those are canceled as well. So that's why okay. we were just trying to follow that line. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, and so... So I have two things about this. I think it's important that we probably kind of keep it a little bit more vague than 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 clear. Is because first of all, if we say the specific emergency that's emailed in the in in the morning email or at the bus stop, that doesn't encompass encompass all the potential emergencies that could happen. And so if one of the emergencies that we don't or if one of the emergencies that happens is one that's not outlined specifically in number four, then potentially. Oh, I thought that was. What was that Taylor saying? I thought her hand up was for Stephanie. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good, Dan. I just wanted to point that out. I, I saw Taylor's hand was up and oh. we were covering it. You want to go, right. Taylor? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I have um, just something about point four that I would also like to mention. Um, I think maybe it should read if campus is closed, our meetings will be canceled because that kind of like for any reason, it should be closed, like weather, emergency. Yeah. That's those are my thoughts. Thank you. OK, so well, let me finish. OK, I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, I don't I think if we have it too specific, then um, yeah, it may not. I mean, an emergency may happen that we don't have in there and then we don't have anything for it or no, no, no framework or mechanism to approach that. Secondly, I don't believe that we should cancel meetings every single time that the campus is closed. We have less than 52 weeks to meet to work for the students, and I think we should utilize every second, especially if there's an emergency, especially if there's weather, because I mean, we're here to address that and look after the students. I understand that if 
you know, there's an emergency, we can, you know, cancel that. Um, but I do think another on the specific specificity of the date and time, if we have um, exact time and date in there, then we're going to have to amend the document every year for all uh, for that. And I think we have the meeting time at 2.30 now. I think it would be good to at least, well, definitely going to keep that. Taylor again. Okay. Definitely going to keep that. And I'll, uh, so Taylor, go ahead. Um, I guess my question would be, what would campus be closed for? Because I, I like Reese um, explained that very well to me. Thank you. Um, so like, wouldn't campus just be closed for like holidays? Would we still like have a meeting over holidays or like for an emergency? I feel like when campus is closed, it's for a legitimate reason, no? So like we shouldn't have a meeting. I don't know. That's my kind of take. Want. Paul? Um, I had the intent of four, including weather related emergencies that would cause foreclosure. Just a point of clarification. Or accounts for weather. Like if yeah. it were to snow. That would Go ahead, Ree. There could also be um, a point made. In addition to just to when the campus is closed, we will not meet. Um, we may um, take a poll and decide if we will have, um, I can't think of the wording, a makeup meeting or something in the interim before the next full scheduled meeting. So we could add that point and then everyone vote, especially if something's pressing that we need to vote on. So until an amendment is made to the resolution that's been proposed, the only resolution on the table is the main motion as it stands. Now, if someone amends it, if someone proposes an amendment, we that would take the place and it would become the new main motion until we settle the amendment to determine whether or not, um, you know, because this is amendable. Um, you know, once, you know, if someone proposes said amendment and says, hey, I pro propose an amendment to this, um, to the tune of changing this to this, striking this language, replacing with this language, some specificity. And until then, we're still just having discussion just to clarify for everyone. And I want to clarify one thing I said. So I said personally, I believe that there should be meetings during, uh, I'm going to rephrase, during, during an emergency. But this amendment, this motion does not say that. It says, as read, that if the campus is closed for emergency, our meeting will be canceled. We're, you know, so I was just saying my personal thing on that, but um, so that's for, that's what we're voting on, or that's what we're discussing right here. Uh, who is next? Taylor. Okay, thank you. Um, so I am proposing that section four of this resolution says, if campus is closed, our meeting will be canceled. I don't under, I don't understand. Um, are you proposing that we strike uh, the words for emergency? Yes, thank you. Are you friendly to the amendment? I would accept it as a friendly amendment. OK, so now. We just struck. The word for an emergency from. Number four. No, it was accepted as a friendly amendment, so the resolution we're voting on is now changed. Um, so it's the same resolution with just minus four an emergency and number four. Correct, Paul? That's correct. That is the motion. That is the resolution we are now discussing. I notice there are still a few hands. So Gabe. Gabe. OK, awesome. Um, well, in that case, then um, I have seen um, that Stephanie um, Alan, um, Chad, um, and myself and stuff do think that it's better to have like a set date and time. Um, so I propose um, for section one to change it once a week um, on Fridays at 2.30 to 
So you're suggesting that we um, strike the portion that says at the time and date specified in the agenda sent out by the co-chair or secretary to replace it with instead on Fridays from 2.30 to 4.30 on lines one and, oh well, yeah, lines one. Oh uh, yes, and it's 3.30, right? Like, because our meetings only run for an hour. So our agenda is said 2.30 to 4.30, but oh, when we adjourn, we adjourn. Okay, yeah, so 2.30 to 4.30. No, 2 to 4.30. I know y'all are I, voting on and talking about when to keep the times and date this meeting as well, right? So I think we should probably wait to specify that. No? Sorry, was that you, Armando? Yeah. Yes. I, I didn't hear what you had said. Could you repeat that? I said, I said, aren't you also talking about what time and date to have the meetings, or was that finalized? If I, am I misconstrued? That's this meeting as well. That, this is the whole resolution. So that's the whole reason we're talking about it now and in, in discussing this resolution is to solidify a time and date and mechanism by which we could cancel or reschedule as needed. And so that's Gabe, if schedule, but isn't also on the agenda, what I'm saying isn't also on the agenda to pick a time and date or was that already this. done? Oh, that's uh, this because uh, this, this amendment from what I think everyone's understanding is rescheduling and changing, not picking no, a so, time and date for the future. Armando, I can help clarify that question. So the very first part of this resolution says meetings will occur once a week at the time and date specified in the agenda sent out by the co-chairs or secretary. That's. You know, as of right now, there is discussion raised by Gabe that that should instead say Fridays from 2.30 to 4.30, which if in that language, I'd be willing to accept as a friendly amendment. But I think that directly addresses when we'd be holding meetings moving forward. So to get back to that, Gabe, do you is, is my rewording of that accurate? Like um, we strike again the portion for the very first item where it says meetings will occur once a week. At the time and date specified the agenda sent out by the co-chair or secretary, um, we strike at the time and specified date in the agenda set out by the co-chair or secretary and replace it with at uh, on Fridays from 2.30 to 4.30. Yes. Awesome. Okay. I'd be willing to accept that as a friendly amendment to this resolution. And we can now have further discussion on the, uh, on the resolution at hand with the two friendly amendments made. Um, instead of it now being more general in uh, the date specified on the agenda, it will be on Fridays from 2.30 to 4.30. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Gabe. It's an excellent uh, change. Any final, final thoughts? Discussion? Concerns, ideas? I would, oh, no, I'm just making sure. I would call to order the, the question. I would, oh, I see Alan's hand. Let's hear it, Alan. I just wanted to clarify the uh, other thing we were talking about. Now that we have the time set, um, if there is a cancellation, um, are we just going to be canceling um, with the rest of the university? I think that's a smart thing to do um, to agree with the rest of the. Um, you know, with like a re and the rest of the campus organizations and the rest of the schools. I mean, I don't really think it needs to be stated that we're going to table it. If it's canceled, I think it would be automatically tabled until the following week, right? So the answer to your question is yes. Yeah. Is that in the event of the school closing, we too would close our meeting. So in line with item four, um, that would, yes, the answer to your question is yes. So I think Taylor's got the, he wrote it in the chat box, the best idea. If the campus is closed, our meeting will be canceled. It's pretty simple. Yeah, that's, okay. we've already agreed on that friendly okay. amendment. So that's the version okay. we are, we are voting on now. Oh, well, that we will be voting on once we feel like we're done with discussion. Okay, so, thank you, sir. Hey, no problem. Clarification is good. Yeah, I called the question. The I call to order the question, so let's vote on it. All right, Stephanie. Hi. Mike. Hi. James. 
Aye. Bree. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Gabe. Aye. Alex. Aye. <coughs> Aye. Naomi. Chad. Aye. Alan. Aye. Paul. Aye. Recognize myself or an aye. The, 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 the resolution unanimously passes. Thank you, Council. All right, so the next the next order of business is just a quick discuss quick discussion talk ideas thrown around about the multicultural student welcome day here at MSU um, is going to be September 1st. From it looks like 11. 11 to 1, so they're requesting that they that. The CMEI or the, the office of. Inclusion, diversity, and inclusion um, wants to know if we're going to be tabling uh, the number of counselors that will be there. Do we want a table inside or outside? And then what creative interactive activity we will offer students this year? They want to have a passport, um, a passport little activity where the students will get a passport and they come and engage with each table. And after they engage with the table and do the activity, they get a stamp. And so then they get something for getting all of the passports filled in. And so that is again on September 1st. So I guess this is a good time to discuss a little bit of ideas that we might be able to do so we can get back to and table with. Oh, and I want to add that they said they're expecting three to 400 students at this event. We, we are ordering a stamp. Ooh, and we are ordering a stamp. So I guess I open up the floor to discussion on this here multicultural student welcome day. Go ahead, Paul. I think personally, this is an idea I had this morning when Dan brought it up. Uh, that we should have like a little flag quiz or something so that folks can or maybe like shape of the country quizzes. And so we get countries that folks may not recognize the flag for or the shape of the country or maybe some, I don't know, a little bit of information about it. Um, and we have prizes for people who have a good geographical knowledge or knowledge of exology. So that's my idea. Um, I see Taylor has raised his hand, so feel free. Yeah, I just want to say I really like that idea. And I am happy to work with whoever I need to work with to order some swag. I ordered some for SACAP last year. I can do it for TSEC too, but I will need to make a resolution so we have a budget for that. Thank you. Alan. Maybe we could reach out to the uh, language, foreign language department and have some people at our table that speak uh, a few different languages. That's just an idea. I could do it myself. Speak the different languages. No, reach out. I could go talk to some oh. of the, the language. <laughs> okay, just yeah. clarification. Yeah. All right, thank no, you. I'm not that almighty. <laughs> Bummer. All right, thank you for that. That's a good idea. Uh, so, I guess got a couple of good ideas. All right, so that we have a few. Oh wait. That's Alan's old hand. Okay, so we have a few ideas. I guess that's going to be open up. I think the I think we have a week and a half to be able to, you know, for the reservation or the RSVP ends on that. So we we can bring this up. Um, Gabe, go ahead. Oh yeah, I just want to say like who would be interested in being there and stuff. Um, to just make sure that like this is something that we can handle and stuff. You know, because I I would hate for just like one person to be stuck doing the whole tabling um, because that's not fun. So, you know, just making sure of like who is going to take charge on this and like if there's going to be a spreadsheet or something done to just make sure that it's like set, you know, um, and not just random out of the blue type of thing, you know. Good, uh, good call. Good idea on uh, Mike. Hey, um, so 
I'm making a spreadsheet for um, convocation. So I think I can just make one for this as well and send it out to the chat and um, see who can sign up for what. Um, yeah, I can make I can make that spreadsheet. Um, and I'll, I plan on being there. Thanks, Mike. Ari. The second question, do we want a table inside or outside? Well, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. I would say, yeah, inside. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Stephanie. Um, where do we think the most people are going to be at, outside or inside? It's hot outside. I would I would personally be inside, but that doesn't mean everybody would be. Okay. Okay. So, got a few good ideas. Um, I, I can be there for part for part of the time. I do have a class in the middle of that at some point, but I could be there for the first hour or help set up and all of that. So. We can keep this discussion going. Oh, uh, Naomi. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to point out, um, I will be with NISA already. I have to, we didn't have enough committee members to um, set up for that. So I will be participating in that with them, um, unfortunately. But if I can help you guys like in between or something, just let me know and I can possibly just like run back and forth if need be, if you guys don't have enough volunteers for that day. But um, my priority will be NISA for that day. Tell me at 11. The answer to your question, Gabe's coming right in the chat. Oh, thank you, Taylor and Paul. All right. So I guess any further discussion? Is that your is that a, a new hand, Naomi? No, sorry about that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Not a problem. All right. I have some. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, not for this. All right. So I guess that'll close up our discussion of this. Um, got some good ideas. James, okay. Yeah, that's all good. Thank you for letting us know on that, James. Um, so I guess, I guess the, the real determiner is, is how many people can be there. And if, if enough of us can make it to relieve each other, um, so we're not there all the time, I guess we'll have a table. If not, we'll have to, um, maybe pass on that, but we'll bring that up further discussion. All right, moving on to. Not just new business. All right. So I'm going to recognize Paul for, for some new business. I, um, just wanted to end here before we initiated public comment, wanted to respond to, um, concerns of us uh, resuming the meeting last Friday. Um, it was my re at coming into this position as a, a student advocacy counselor. I what we had was talking to our our fellows who had served prior um, and reading the governing documents and everything that I read in the governing documents outlines the role of advisors is those who um, give advice on issues. We have um, adjudication roles given to um, advisors, I didn't necessarily see um, the ultimate like decision on whether or not we cancel a meeting falling under the purview of our advisors. I saw that as something that might be more under um, our own purview as the council specifically. And so I didn't want to, it wasn't out of an attempt to snub anyone. I just, it, I, I thought it was a matter for the council specifically. So that's why I raised it in a poll and um, it had voiced my concerns in the chat as we all saw it um, because yeah that's all I have to say on it so Stephanie all right okay I don't think um thank you for mentioning that I don't think you were intentionally trying to I just think when it comes from admin um especially when we don't have very much information um just take heed to their advice, you know? And I think that's what Armando was trying to say, is like if admin is saying it, there's a reason why they're saying it, you know? Um, and we might not know all of the information. Um, but yeah, just taking that advice going forward. It most definitely is our decision, by the way. Don't think that it is not. Um, so they don't cancel our meetings, we cancel our meetings. It's just taking their advice and using our situational awareness, as he mentioned. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. I, I hear both. I do like it's I do really think it's important that we do follow, follow our, our bylaws and, and the things such as this and the things that we have laid out. So as we going forward, we can address some of the concerns we have in the gaps in the, in the bylaws and in this documents and address those so we can fill in the gaps. I think that is great. Um, so, yeah, Cordy, anybody? All right. According to the agenda, we have public comment now. So although I meant to say this at the beginning, uh, Public comment, throw your name in the chat and the floor is yours. You have five minutes.
not seeing any. Going twice. Okay. For our agenda. Meetings adjourned. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. <laughs>